Welcome. In this video, I'm going to show you how uh, I made, or in this case, how Layla made her name in this rather nice looking pixel art font. And this is actually, uh, this is someone else's name here, David. This is actually going to be designed and made on a program called 2D Design, a piece of CAD software. Um, and we can use that to then control a laser cutter to cut out our name from card. So this is some three millimeter card here. Um, and you can see how I can remove the surround and I'm left with my individual letters. So Layla did the same thing with her name. She then stuck the letters down onto a piece of colored card and then decorated it as she wanted. So that looks great. So I'm going to be doing this, as I say, on a program called TechSoft 2D Design. This is the software right here. And to help me do this, I'm going to work with uh, a, a template graphic which uh, which I've got off the internet. Now it's actually available on my supporting website site for this project, but you can also do a search on Google for uh, pixel art alphabet styles and you'll get up lots of options. So I've already got my graphic available. Here it is. So I'm just going to paste that in. Um, if you're working with uh, in my projects, then you'll have access to this as I see on the website. Okay, now whenever I'm working on 2D design, I always like to work with a lined grid, similar to what the line grid we can see here. Um, so what I need to do here is go to my grid lock settings and right click in the top right there. I'm going to specify my grid spacing to be five millimeters because it gives me a nice resolution and it will give me the correct size that I want for my, for my lettering. Um, and I'm also going to put it to lines. I'm going to keep it black for the time being and you'll see what happens. I get this uh, quite intense kind of black grid. Um, and as we start to draw lines, and the lines we're drawing are going to be in black, those lines don't stand out particularly well. So instead, what I'm going to do is go back to gridlock settings, right click, and I'm going to change the line color here to be pale blue. And I find that a lot easier on the eyes. Looks a lot to me like science graph paper, so that feels great. And you can see that my lines are going to stand out nice and clearly. Okay, I'm going to select with the selection tool that line and I'm going to press delete on the keyboard, not backspace. That doesn't do anything. I've got to press the delete key. Okay, so that's gone. Now looking at this uh, this image here with all these letters, I can see that this also has a grid, but the grid isn't quite the same size as the blue grid that I have in my drawing area. So let's have a see. Can I pick this up and can I perhaps scale this so the grid is more accurate? Well, first of all, I'm going to zoom in. So over here, let's just move this menu to the side a bit. You don't need to do this, but I'm, I'm actually going to move it to, to here. Um, I'm going to zoom in perhaps down over here. Uh, let's get that selection tool again. Um, and I'm going to come, if I work with grid lock, you'll notice that if, as I move this around, it's going to snap. You can see it's kind of snapping to the grid as I move it around, and it's actually off the grid at the moment. Whereas if I come to step lock, well, let's right click on step lock, and you'll see my step lock spacing is one millimeter, not five. One millimeter in the X horizontally, and one millimeter in the Y vertically. So if I just confirm that and keep step lock turned on and now move this, you'll see that it will snap and I can move it more precisely around. Now I'm going to try and make it here. So perhaps that bottom corner, and it's quite funny here that this is coming from a website called Crochet Doilies. Uh, anyway, sideline. Uh, I should have perhaps deleted that, but then again, I'm respecting their ownership of this image, aren't I? Let's move this a little bit further down perhaps here like that. I'm almost in line here with the grid. I'm not going to try and get it perfect, okay? Now what I'm going to do perhaps is zoom out a little bit with this negative tool here, negative zoom, and I'm going to resize this. Now when I resize this, do not left click on this because if you do, you can distort it like this and everything gets squashed. It's one of my pet hates. Please don't do that. I'm going to undo that and instead I'm going to right click. Um, in this software 2D design, you don't click and hold, you click, move, and click again. So I'm going to right click, move, and then I'm going to right click again. Bit of a tongue twister that one. And see if I can get these lines to, to line up. Now, if I don't manage to do this, it's not the end of the world. And please don't spend forever doing this, you know. But uh, I'm just going to persevere with this a little bit longer, see if I can get it a wee bit closer. And then if I can't, I'm not going to cry about it. Let's try and get those lines all aligned. This come down perhaps a millimeter there as well. Okay, let's try that again. Let's try and pull this out. And of course, something I could do to help me do this, which might be rather clever, is I might want to actually count all the squares here. I'm going to count it right now, but I think I might pause it partway through the video. So here we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. 
46 squares. Okay, uh, something just occurred to me then that would have made my life a lot easier. Each of these letters is actually five squares across, so I, should, I could have just gone one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, times five is 35, and then added on one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46. That would have been faster than me counting them, but hey, there you go. Um, 46. Now, these are the individual squares, and remember, each of these squares is five millimeters across. So, I, uh, 46 squares is not 46 centimeters. It's because each square is half a centimeter, I need to half 46, which is, of course, 23. So, what I'm going to do now is get a dimension line tool with gridlock turned on, and I'm going to draw a line out here, which is going to be 23 centimeters long. How do I know that? Well, if I look down at the bottom here where it says relative grid reference, you'll see if I move my mouse around, that rel number here changes. It changes in the X. It's currently 65 or negative 65, and it changes in the Y as well. So I want to move this along, so the Y is going to be 0, but I want to move this along so it's going to be 230 millimeters or 23 centimeters, which is half 46. There it is. Let's just drop that there. And then all I need to do now, hopefully, is just right-click, pull this back to that point right there. Let's just try and align this perfectly. And that, he says, should mean... Move that a bit to the left, like that, that my grid aligns perfectly. Now, does it? Oh, it's not bad, not bad. Um, okay, I'm, I'm not going to persevere with this because you're probably pulling your hair out already. We're six minutes in and thinking, what are we going to do here? Are we going to make alphabets or not? So, if you got all that and you can resize the grid, go for it. If you're working from my website and you've got the grid on there, you probably don't need to do this. Just move on, okay? So, I'm going to pause at that point. Let's actually look at making some of these letters. So, let's have a see. What, what, what letter am I going to have? I'm going to have Henry. I'm going to make a Henry. Here we go. Uh, so, first of all, H. Now that I can see here that this is going to be... Uh, a bar here, um, and uh, I think this is this called an ascender. I think this bar here. Uh, this is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight squares. Or I can actually see, and if I look here, halfway point is four squares up. So I think I'll get faster at this as I'm working on it because I get my head around the way these eight, these these uh, pixel art fonts are being made. Now to do this, I'm going to need to draw some lines. Now I could come up to the line tool here um, and notice at the moment I've got step lock on. If I have step lock on, it's going to be very difficult for me to draw lines that are vertical. If I turn on grid lock, remember that grid lock is a five millimeter grid, suddenly it's going to be super easy for me to draw vertical lines because the cursor snaps to the grid and I want vertical and horizontal lines here. Let's get the selection tool. Let's select all that, and again, on the keyboard, press delete. Now, rather than drawing a series of separate lines, I'm instead going to come to this path tool. I'm going to hold the mouse button down, and notice that the, it expands out. And in here, I've got access to something called an open polyline. Now, <laughs> it just expanded off on my, des my desktop there, but there's my draw and open polyline pop-up. That's what I'm going to work with. Let's move that to the side again. And this now means that I can start to draw a continuous line. And to finish, I'm going to right click. Let's do that and let's try and draw an H. So I'm going to select this and I want to come down eight squares. Now, again, we're working with a five mil grid. Eight squares, eight times a half is going to give me four. So eight times, uh, sorry, eight half centimeter squares is four centimeters in total. And if I have a look down at the bottom here, I'm looking at that relative grid reference, four centimeters is 40 millimeters. So I can use that relative grid reference to quickly dial in these numbers. Now it's gonna come across two squares or one centimeter. It's gonna go up three or one and a half off. I'll go to, I'm going to go to millimeters now. That's 15 millimeters. It goes across five millimeters, down 15, across 10, up 40. And all the time I'm looking down here, across 10, down 20, left 5, up 20, left 10, and there's that H. And if I want to prove it is the H, I can pick this up and I should be able to drop it across and you'll see it perfectly matches the H on the graphic. In fact, I can click off, off this and it almost disappears. To get it back, I need to just carefully click on those lines or put a bounding box around it. Click once on the Move tool, bring it back, 
Okay, great. Let's do an E. Okay, I'm going to do this a little bit different. If you drew the grid over here, or, or should I say if you resize the grid, you're actually at a bit of an advantage because what I can literally do is, look, I can just draw around the E. I feel like I'm kind of cheating here, to be honest with you. Uh -oh. I'll finish that one off. There you go. Right-click to finish. Pick it up. Bring it across. There's my E for Henry, looking really good. I'm going to do the N now, and I'm going to do it manually over here because I like a challenge. And I'm going to start bottom left. Okay, so this is going to be coming up again, 40 millimeters. I know all these letters now are eight squares tall. Eight times half a centimeter is four centimeters. That's 40 millimeters. You know, I'm just going to I'm just going to go for it. And I know the width is going to be two squares or 10 millimeters. Great. Now I've got this little kind of stepping down here. So let's go. Let's go I'm going to go down five mil, right five down 5, right 5, up 10, right 10, down 40, left 10. Now I'm going to make a mistake on purpose. I'm going to come up 15, not 20, and then I'm going to step this out, and then I'm going to come down and finish. Now hopefully you can see there that what I've drawn does not match this. And to prove the point, if I pick it up and I come over here and drop it on, you will see, fingers crossed, that the bottom here is wrong. Okay, notice as well that if I put a bounding box, oh no, I can do it. I thought that would perhaps track the image. No, that was fine. Let's bring it back. How am I going to fix this? So I'm going to select it. I'm going to go to Start Edit. And notice this Start Edit doesn't appear normally. It appears down there in the bottom right corner. If I click off, it disappears. If I click on it again, it reappears. So I'm going to go to Start Edit. And I now get all these little nodes. And I can move the nodes with the mouse. So I can click, move, click, move, click click, move, click, click, move, click, and now I've fixed the image. So that's my N. Uh, what I would propose you do here, if things go horribly wrong with these letters and you end up making a real mess, probably the best thing to do is delete it and just try and draw it again. And it, you know, if you persevere with it, you'll be able to do it straight away. Perfect. Okay. Um, I'm going to finish off the R here, and then there's the Y to finish. So that's going to be up 40. Now, in this case, it's going to be, if I have a look here, look, I go right, four squares, that's 20. Again, I'm looking at the relative reference down here. I'm going to go across 20, down five, right five, down 15, left five, down five, right five, down 15, left 10, up 15, left 5, down 15, left 10. And in this case, I have got a counter, which is this little thing in the middle here. That's called a counter. And uh, I need to just place in here a rectangle, which is 5 millimeters wide and 50 millimeters tall. Right click to finish. Let's do the Y. So I'm just zoomed. I've just scrolled down actually with a wheel mouse. Um, if you're working with a trackpad, by the way, personally, I hate trackpads. I wouldn't use a trackpad. Get yourself a mouse. It's so much easier. Let's persevere with the Y. <laughs> Little sidetrack comments. Okay, I'm this is a complicated one. Let's go down 10, right 5, down 10, right 5, down 20, right 10, up 20, right 5, up 10, right 5, up 10, left 10. It's probably occurred to me now that you're so sick of me going left and right and up and down and saying these numbers. You've probably muted the video by now, but hopefully by this point you know what you're doing, yeah? And you can just kind of rattle on through without listening to me jabbering on. Here we go. We're almost there. That comes up. Oh, no, I made a mistake. Look, that should have... I've made a very strange mistake here. What on earth is going on? That comes to there. Yeah, dearie me, dearie me. Okay, you know what? I'm going to fix this again now. I was too busy talking and, and I stopped counting and giving directions and look what happens. Crazy. So this comes along here up. Oh no, no that is correct. I thought I did it wrong. And just to prove the point, let's drop it in there again. Let's just confirm. It, it's perfect. Let's undo and pop it back over there. Wonderful. Now let's just pick this up. Thank you. Let's drag that off to the side there. And I'm using gridlock so it's going to stay on the grid. I think I'll just zap that dimension line at the top there. Selection box, drop it up there. There we go. Awesome. There's my Henry, ready to be laser cut, except for one small little feature. For this to be laser cut, uh, what I need to do is um, change the color because the our laser cutter here is configured not to do anything with black lines. So you can draw all your designs in black and not worry about 
everything being cut out by the laser cutter you might want some things to be just engraved on the surface uh, and other things cut all the way through and some things engraved so black is used as like a construction line but it's not actually uh, it's not actually controlling the laser cutter to make this cut through the card I need to make the letters blue and in this case to do this all I'm going to do is select these letters and I'm going to go to the line color up here at the top and the blue I want to work with is down here in these custom colors it's bizarre because I'd call these custom colors and those basic colors but who knows Microsoft says it's this way around so these are our custom colors I suppose we can tweak these by going to define custom colors but we are not going to we're going to work with these basic colors here uh, and there's the black that is ignored by the laser cutter this red and the green are reserved for engraving and the red is a light engrave the green is a dark engrave and we have the blue here for a full cut so let's select the blue confirm that there we can see the blue stands out nicely that is now ready to send to the laser cutter all you need to do now is save it to your personal network storage so it's safe and to the shared network drive where we can pick it up and we'll get that laser cut and we can see what we get when it comes out on the card let's just take this back to the side again let's just see can I can I bring in my other view there look there it is that's what we're going to get with Henry you know what I think I'm going to do that right now and then I'm going to show you the results I'll pause the video back in a second okay so I'm just back from the laser cutter and let's have a see what we have got so I'm going to bring the camera in here so that was Layla's box let me just move that out of the way like so and what have we got we have got Henry that looks absolutely awesome there it is and uh, what I thought I might do is uh, just stick this down onto a piece of card quickly so to do that let's have a look I'll need a glue pot this has been well and truly glued up hasn't it and not been washed properly but if, as long as we're using it for glue that should be fine and the glue I'm using here is uh, PVA glue wood glue so let's just squirt a little bit in there uh, that, there you go you don't need much at all put the lid back on very important I've got a little spatula here and let's see if I can just start to put a bit of glue I don't need much just on the back there okay and then place that on now when I place this on here's a bit of a hint if I got a ruler and just place that ruler so the bottom edge is against the bottom edge of the uh, of the card or the paper should I say and then place that on there you go it's actually the glue is just smushed a bit to the side there probably put a bit too much glue on so that means it's, they're all going to be aligned along this edge now let's just get a bit more glue here put some on here bit at the end there whoops I got glue on my finger now I should have a paper towel here shouldn't I ah uh, yeah 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 thankfully PVA glue is not a problem really it's always a good idea to have a paper towel when you're gluing so I'm just going to move this along now so look I've got the two centimeters at the end of the H and I'm going to put this one at three there we are and again I'm making sure the bottom edge here is against the uh, the edge of the red paper okay let's bring this across so that the, the E is at the end of five and I've got the ruler at the bottom still I'm going to put that at six I think you can get the idea now all right that's the R oh that's handy the nine's already there at the end of the N so let's put the R on beautiful we've still got it lined up beautifully and why not here we go Now this is a bit different because I'm actually measuring it against the top edge of the Y so I'm going to have to just try and line this up by sight. I'm sure with a protractor I could do something more precise but I think that's looking rather cool. Look at that, awesome! And then I can get some pencil crayons, some sharpies, whatever, add some colour to it. That looks pretty cool. Hope you found that fun and interesting. Hope to see you next time. Hope to see you next time.